Great, this seems like a good time to move on to Tater. Ben Woodward will now present an overview of Tater, an online video annotation tool that integrates seamlessly with FathomNet. Ben is CEO of SeaVision AI, a machine learning startup that develops innovative video analytics products to harness the power of computer vision and artificial intelligence. Ben specializes in video analysis software, automatic detection and tracking solutions, and creating and curation of data sets for algorithmic development, and has been a key part of the FathomNet team from the very beginning. And I was remiss in thanking Brian so much for the overview of the FathomNet database. So thank you, Brian, um, for that. And we will definitely dig into the details of the database a lot more tomorrow. So I'll turn it over to Ben. This is one video annotation platform that works seamlessly with FathomNet. Um, and it sounds like there are a lot of questions about annotation and how to do that. So he will hopefully be able to answer a lot of questions now. All right. Thank you, Katie. Can everyone hear me and see my screen? Okay. Yes. Loud, loud and clear. Excellent. Okay. Great. Always have to double check that. Um, yeah. Great talk so far. I'm really, really excited to be here and talking about this. Um, I want to reemphasize the point that while I'm going to be talking about our, our annotation platform here, there are so many annotation tools out there. And what we're not suggesting is that, you know, Fathom that is the, or uh, Tater is the way and the only way to get stuff into Fathom that. So, you know, people have talked about bars and Beagle and Squiddle, Biame, Rect Label, CVAT. Um, and I'm sure that you know we can continue to gather uh, lists of more of those tools in the chat if people are interested in them. And what I want to say is that those are all viable ways of getting data into FathomNet. So um, if you are using those tools and you want to know how to get that data into FathomNet, I encourage you to reach out to those developers if you're interested in getting uh, that data into FathomNet. With that, I'm going to talk a little bit more about our annotation platform called Tater. Um, so what is Tater? It's a collabor web-based collaborative analysis platform. Uh, Tater started is a native C++ app way back in 2015 uh, for video analysis, because at that time, there were very few video annotation apps that had the flexibility and specifically the frame accuracy we needed. As we work more and more with people around the world, we realized that there was a better need to, a need to better collaborate on data analysis uh, that didn't include shipping hard drives full of video uh, all around the world and maintaining multiple versions of Excel export files and databases and so on and so forth. So in 2019, we started development of Tater Online. Later, we shortened it just to Tater. Solve the problem of exactly that, shipping hard drives everywhere. Um, this project then became supported by National Geographic Society's Exploration Technology Lab, uh, and then as a phase one and later phase two NOAA SBIR. Our emphasis from the start has been on high performance, scalable video analysis available to anyone in the world. Many of our collaborators come from places with challenging internet situations. We put a lot of effort into how to solve this problem. The organizing principles for Tater really have been performance and scalability. Um, so what do I mean by performance? From the start, Tater has been focused on video. The need for frame accurate playback to support consistent annotation is where we started with our native app and that continued over to the web application. The need to be able to serve thousands of hours of video with a diverse range of needs drove us to create our own custom video player. Based on web standards, we built in features that answered the need for collaborative analysis for globally distributed teams. Much of the raw video that we received used codecs designed for high performance video editing machines, such as ProRes 422. This means that a one hour clip could be hundreds of gigabytes. Clearly that's not a feasible solution for streaming. So when we ingest video, we transcode to format suitable for streaming and are much lower bit rate while maintaining near visually lossless detail. As an example, when we received data for the NOAA capstone expedition, which you'll learn more about later, it came in the form of multiple terabytes. We were able to achieve a 98% space savings by transcoding from the ProS 422 to AVC, which is a, a format that's widely used for streaming. In addition, we transcoded to multiple resolutions, which means that all of a sudden we can talk about required connection speeds in kilobits per second instead of megabits effectively giving access for a whole host of users with constrained in, in, internet connections. 
But wait, you say, if I'm streaming at 144p, there's not enough detail to annotate what I, what I need, which is very true, which is why we have a, one kind of big trick up our sleeve. When you pause a video, Tater automatically fetches the frame at the highest resolution available and substitutes it into the view, but just that frame. This means that you can effectively watch video with a much lower bandwidth, but annotate at the highest quality. And you can see that in this video here, where you have the ability to notice that there's something going on. And then when you hit pause, you get this highly detailed view. Okay, scalability. That's our next kind of pillar. What do we mean by scalability? To us, it means that the system is able to serve many organizations with many use cases and workflows with the same infrastructure and code base. Tater runs on Kubernetes, which is a container orchestration platform that allows it to dynamically scale up and down resources depending upon demands. These demands could be anything from a spike in users, for instance, when analysts sign on for the day, to a spike in data ingestion or a batch run of algorithms being kicked off. Tater handles all of this seemingly by running on cloud or bare metal infrastructure. Our managed instance of Tater, Tater Cloud, currently has hundreds of users, over 40,000 hours of videos, close to a million images, and multiple millions of annotations spread across dozens of individual projects. These projects handle different media types, such as stereo video, multi-camera vessel systems, drop camera systems, or BRUVs, uh, baited remote underwater video systems, uh, time of flight cameras, uh, and so on. For annotations, there are standard box, line, dot, and polygons, as well as the ability to do things such as automatically get length measurements based on calibrated stereo images after drawing a line, or using calibration from ROVs with measurement laser to automatically get uh, measurement panels. All of these are configurable per project. What you see here are just a couple of examples. On the bottom left there, you see uh, an image of uh, basically a conveyor belt where we um, have analysts who want to count and measure scallops on a scalloping vessel. Um, that has an algorithm uh, interface in it to automatically count and measure those. What you see in the middle is an example of NOAA OER capstone data, um, where we make that avail video available to anyone who wants to log into Tater, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And on the bottom right is a, is an, uh, a project where we take in images from um, uh, observers of fisheries programs where they need an interface for uploading images and having uh, human and algorithm uh, workflows kind of uh, gelled together. Similar to um, what Brian talked about with FathomNet's API, we have the ability to um, use autocomplete. And so what you see in the middle right there um, is that you can start typing in and get autocomplete suggestions for, for your types of annotations. So all of these things allow us to have extremely scalable and flexible um, <clears throat> projects within Tater. These next couple slides are gonna go over a few of the features uh, for the video player and the annotation. Um, as mentioned, we support frame accurate playback. This means you can seek to exact frames within a video. For instance, when revisiting a specific annotation, Tater also supports fast scrubbing through a video at a lower resolution, playback rate controls, and the ability to select a streaming resolution for normal playback. It also includes features for zooming in on a frame and panning around on a zoom view. For collaboration, you can create named bookmarks that will return you to a media and frame exactly, as well as the ability to create links that you can share with collaborators that will bring them to that exact frame. Kind of a phone a friend, as it were. For annotation features, on the left, you see the controls I described about different annotation types, while on the right, you find our entity browser, which is how you access and edit information about an annotation. You can filter what annotations are viewable. For instance, if you're viewing a frame with algorithm annotations, you can choose to only view annotations that are above a certain confidence threshold. In addition, uh, we have a concept called versions, which you can kind of think of like layers in Google Maps. Each user can have their own layer. So if you say have, say, a fish person and a coral person, they can annotate independently and easily view later only their own work. You can have layers grouped by attributes, by users, really kind of any structure that you can imagine. 
the other thing that Hader provides is a, a localization gallery or analysis portal, right? So this, this probably looks very similar to the kind of the fathom that you, you, you saw where you searched by, you know, either a certain region or a certain uh, taxonomy provider or a certain species and you got results uh, in a kind of a convenient form. We have what's called a localization gallery. Once you created a bunch of annotations, you probably want to review your work or share the work that you've done. You can view other people's work here if you have the right permissions. Uh, this is a great place for QA, QC workflows. For instance, an analyst may go through and draw boxes and make preliminary annotations for all organisms in a video. And then a senior taxonomist can come through and review these observations and make corrections without having to watch an entire video. You can even do bulk corrections of any attribute. For instance, all of a certain species or you know, say the wrong taxonomic level was described or something with a quick select and update workflow. When using the gallery, you can filter to certain videos, sections of video, or any metadata attribute. For instance, you may want to review all jellyfish of a certain species or admire a specific user's annotations, which is what you see in the screenshot on the right. These annotations come from Dan uh, or Tropic of Dan uh, and are in the NOAA uh, capstone project. Similar to FathomNet, we have a number of APIs of, available. So we have uh, a RESTful API and a Tater, uh, what we call Tater Pi. So let's say you've QA'd all your data, you're happy with all your observations, and now you wanna actually do something with the data. Excuse me. While there are a number of analysis tools within Tater, we also recognize that you probably wanna do your own data analysis, maybe within your own uh, environment. Tater Pi is our Python bindings that allow you to access all information within a project and do your own analysis. For instance, you can fetch all annotations and put them in a pandas data frame. You can even fetch the annotation regions of interest or individual frames for visual, visualization inside environments, such as Google Colab or Jupyter Notebooks. The screenshot in the center is using a similarity search algorithm to fetch visually similar results based on feature vectors or annotated regions of interest with some fathom that data that we you know, ingested back into Tater for an example. Tater also provides a full RESTful API, which means developers can write their own utilities or web applications to interact with the session on Tater. Um, now we kind of get into the, the dashboards or you know, in this case, how, how you interact with Fathom, right? So the next few slides are going to cover some of the more standard built-in dashboards we have created for Tater. The first one that we present is the dedicated dashboard for curating data to submit to Fathom. Um, this dashboard allows you to filter specific media, attributes, or user versions for export, uh, and then it automatically generates the required URLs. So while we're focused on video, FathomNet takes uh, image URLs. So this will automatically generate uh, the image URLs that you need, uh, make publicly available URLs, um, map all of the metadata that you have available, uh, and then create a CSV that's able to be uploaded directly into FathomNet. Um, this process is how we worked with Dr. Deanna Soper at the University of Dallas and her students to curate annotations on NOAA capstone video and submit them to FathomNet. For more information on that project, I encourage you to reach out to her and I imagine she'll probably be covering it in her education breakout session tomorrow. Uh, and her students created amazing presentations about how they use Tater for summer projects related to annotation and analysis of the OER video. We've already seen the localization gallery dashboard, but I wanted to emphasize that while experiences such as that are built into Tater, because we recognize the wide scale utility of them, there are other ways of using dashboards in the API to visualize data. For example, the image on the bottom left shows two examples of GIS based visualization. The first is a series of data points that are videos tagged with the NOAA research vessel Henry B. Bigelow where we installed cameras as part of a data collection effort of groundfish species in the Northeast. Analysts can view catch data and view video and images of specific catch based on fine-grained geolocation parameters. On the right, you see an app created by National Geographic's Deep Sea Research Project to give observation data overlaid on layers in ArcGIS Online. This data was scraped using the Tater REST API and used to periodically update these views. The last dashboard I want to show is one for exporting data in common formats. While we provide APIs for accessing data, TaterPy and the REST API, sometimes people just want data exported and kind of 
good old CSV format. So to that end, we provide another standard dashboard, which is a summary dashboard. This allows you to output information about annotations, scope to sections or media, as well as specific versions or multiple versions. The dashboard will then format that data in a convenient CSV and allow you to download it. In addition, there's an option to also export all of the crop bounding block regions for annotations of that type. This will create a zip file with all the extracted images and allow you to download them. Sometimes this can take a little while. In the example you see here, there's over 2,000 uh, images, you know, thumbnails that it has to generate for you to download. So all of those features are things that we offer as part of Tater. How do you get started in contributing towards Fathomer? Well, as part of kind of our interactions with NOAA uh, and, and Fathomet, we have the ability to have hosted data from NOAA. Um, and all you need to do is create an account and we can give you access to that data. So you can start streaming videos and doing annotation uh, and all of that NOAA hosted data is available for anyone to access and annotate. Um, if you want to try Tater with your own video or imagery, uh, we offer a free trial for people who want to do that. Uh, you can email uh, info at cvnai.com to get started. Uh, there's a website. Uh, and then I encourage you to look at this excellent video um, by University of Dallas student Carol Ann Stone on how they use Tater as part of the verification process for NOAA capstone data that was eventually contributed uh, into Fathomet. As a kind of bonus, uh, one of the things we've been working on is how we can start uh, importing and using data hosted not within Tater, uh, but by other organizations. So this is an example of footage that is actually being hosted um, by the Schmidt Ocean Institute uh, as um, ROV footage from uh, one of their Falcor cruises. Um, so we're able to use their streaming interface and can now import that data without actually hosting the data into Tater. Um, and we can start creating uh, annotations. Uh, and then in addition to creating those annotations, we can now create data that can start to be contributed to Fathom. So uh, this is very much a beta. We just started working on this a couple of weeks ago, but we're really excited to start working with uh, people who have their own video hosting resources um, to start using Tater as a way to generate Fathomnet annotations and get those up into the database. Um, so you see my uh, highly taxonomically correct uh, annotations going on here. Um, but this is just an example of you know, how we're able to stream data from uh, other providers. Uh, finally, we're able to do some uh, neat tricks um, like AI assisted annotation. Um, so you know, we've talked a little bit about algorithms that have been generated as part of FathomNet data. Uh, well, those can be registered directly within Tater um, and you can do uh, basically seek to a frame and do right click and try and detect species. And it will you know, create a series of suggested bounding boxes with labels uh, and algorithm scores associated with them. Uh, you can then start you know, correcting them or providing notes about them. You can even do other workflows such as visual tracking. So in this case, you can turn a detection and say, I wanna start tracking this thing through the rest of the video and you can have it automatically extend the track using a visual tracker. All of these things are enabled by the fact that we have data initially contributed to FathomNet. Um, we have those models that are hosted in the model zoo, um, and those are you know, publicly available for anyone to do this type of annotation, this type of algorithmic workflows. And we're really excited to see what other people come up with uh, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to this type of data. Uh, and finally, just another kind of plug for dashboards. We showed you the ones that you know we've created in there, but using the REST API allows you to do kind of anything you kind of really can program inside of there. So what you see here is actually a dashboard that we created for someone who had a hosted algorithm where they wanted to see particular performance so they could set operating thresholds as part of their workflow for you know algorithm-assisted classification of images. Um, all of this stuff is now available as part of their project um, without having to rewrite the entire code base. Uh, with that, uh, I want to say thank you. Um, here's the website to, to Tater itself. Uh, and to end with, you know, the main takeaway from this is really that 
this data is now able to be contributed to FathomNet and many of the features that you saw in there in terms of like AI sanitation wouldn't be possible without FathomNet. Uh, and so, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ben. Um, and then, you know, again, I just want to reiterate this point that there's a lot of annotation tools out there. And what we're really excited about is like already VARS, um, but also Tater has mechanisms for getting data into FathomNet. And, you know, if you have a, <clears throat> a your favorite annotation tool, it would be really helpful for us if you got in touch with them and told them that this is a feature you'd like to see in their annotation tool, because I think your feedback helps motivate uh, those those changes uh, in, in, in those software packages. Uh, so anyways, we're happy to take any questions right now. Um, I can there's a couple that I noticed earlier. Uh, so for one, are you using Google Firebase or Firestone for Tater, Ben? Uh, no, we, we just use a PostgreSQL database that's uh, hosted on, you know, either local or, um, you know, uh, AWS relational database service. Okay, great. And then uh, Tim has a question about whether you can export annotations or queries as a text file or spreadsheet. I think you shared that, but yes you can um you know we sh we shared like we said standard data ones but there are ways to basically export in any format um that you know is if you have a custom binary format and you have a way to actually create that format that can be registered as an output format well and then related to that question do you have multiple formats for how the annotation data is written out so like yolo format? yeah so, so one of the things that we're working on now is is not just exporting data for you know human readability analysis, but actually for you know creating data sets. So one of the things we started doing is creating an MS Coco analysis um, uh, tool for being able to generate those types of data sets. But um, that's kind of a you can do that yourself directly within TaterPy. But we're working on making um, you know. Uh, example utilities that already do that for you so you don't have to write your own. Great. Um, so then there's there is a comment that you made. I think that some people wanted clarification. So you said that NOAA data, you could just sign up and start that NOAA data is hosted and then you can start annotating it. Can you explain what subset of NOAA data you're talking yeah, about? Sorry. I, I, yeah, I, I should. Uh, so as part of as part of our phase two SBIR, we worked with NOAA's Office of Exploration Research, uh, specifically on their NOAA capstone data, um, specifically one expedition to the musician Seamounts, uh, where we have that data ingested into Tater. And we worked with um, Dr. Deanna Soper at the University of Dallas and her lab to take annotations that were actually created in VARs uh, when the initial analysis were done on that, but didn't have localization data associated with them. We ingested those into Tater and then students actually took those annotations and added localization information to them. That information was then enriched with additional bounding boxes to do that kind of completion of coverage that Brian talked about or Kakani talked about where you need to look at all of the things within the scene. And then that data formed the export um, into FathomNet. Great. Uh, uh, and, so, and, so, uh, and so to finish the last part is that if you, if you sign up and you want just access to that data, um, then you, anyone can go in there and start um, doing their own annotation. So you'll get your own version where you can go and make your own data. Uh, and then if you want to play around with it, you're more than welcome. Yeah, I think the reason why it was eliciting some excitement is I think some of the NOAA folks that weren't in OER were hoping maybe their data oh, could yeah. be posted. So you know I, I mean, mean? We, we are working with NOAA um, on, in other offices on other projects related to this. Um, some of that is for their own internal projects, and some of that hopefully will become public projects as part of you know this hosting effort. You know, there's a lot of excitement with the people we're talking about about contributing to FathomNet. So I'm hopeful that in the future we'll have more and more data posted um, on on Tater for anyone to do annotation and contribute uh, contribution towards. Uh, and Dougal has a really great point or question. He's like, if you don't force constrain annotation labels, doesn't that make comparisons difficult? Um, that is not false. Um, but uh, 
one of the things to to uh, that we consider tater for in this case is kind of that staging ground where people can can be a little more unconstrained. So you may have um, you know different levels of taxonomic expertise uh, where people um, can you know label things to you know a completely different morphological uh, structure or label set. Uh, and then that data could be iteratively reviewed by interactions with experts and then turned into that gold standard data, which would then be important to fathom that. So the answer is yes, but that's intentional because it's not meant to mimic the type of rigor that exists within FathomNet. Great question. And then there's lots of questions about your free trial and what happens when that free trial is over. I mean, so it's it's a thirty day free trial. Uh, after that, you know, we can we can talk about you know what what happens. I, I should I should mention, you know, you can reach out to me. I don't want to spend too much time talking about that. But when it comes to imagery, one of the things that you know we we um, are making as part of the FathomNet stuff here is kind of free hosting of curated imagery where we will decide how much you get to contribute. Um, up to I think a hundred thousand images um, because images are a lot easier and cheaper to host. So if you have a collection of images, reach out to me. We can talk about that. Um, video is a different uh, a different beast. Uh, and so there are a number of different licensing and uh, hosting options available for you. If that is something that you are interested in. Um, but again, I, I should say, I, I think I, I've not been reading too much of the, the chat because I'm waiting for County to do it, but I've seen a lot of kind of like inner, you know, what is the ability to kind of like interact between other annotation tools. And so we've had great success importing uh, uh, annotations from other other tools, uh, the AME, bars, et cetera. We can do, we can do the converse. Um, we've exported data that has been um, curated or QA, QC'd in uh, places such as rect label uh, or label me. So yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, ability there where if you have your own video format uh, but you would like to eventually contribute via Tater that is totally, totally feasible. You don't just have to use uh, what we provide. Yeah, and Martin, your question about if we're aware of the if, I call them if do's, and I think Tim Shoning like rolled his eyes. Uh, but yes, we are aware of, of that file format and you know we can build FathomNet to, to take whatever uh, standard um, you know, submission file type that we, we as the community decide uh, should be used. Um, but we'll go into the specifics, right, of what that looks like as part of the taxonomy session tomorrow. Um, all right, what are we doing on time? So I think we have three more minutes. Are there any implications to providing labeled data to FathomNet that have themselves been annotated by an algorithm? And does FathomNet have a policy for strictly human-generated labeled data? Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, what we accept into FathomNet is still kind of an open question, but it is meant to be highly kind of uh, gate kept in, in in that regard. So um, there's no nothing inherently wrong with data that's been labeled by an algorithm. But what we usually do before contributing it is have that data reviewed or QA QC'd by an expert. Um, so in, in this case, when we, we went through and did uh, experiments with the University of Dallas students, we did some you know, algorithm detection proposals, or, or in this case, if you, if you substitute algorithm detection proposals with less expert users, those data were then reviewed by Deanna Soper, um, who you know was the recognized kind of gatekeeper for that data. So that data did go through a QA QC process, and you know the same thing can be done for algorithmic type data. And I imagine that you know as we work towards you know contribution standards, that would be a consideration that we think about. Yeah, and then uh, I did want to add, you know, there's the fact is, is we're tracking who is is generating the label or the annotation. Um, and for example, you know, at Ambari, well, we're now running object detectors to generate proposals that uh, members of the video lab then then review prior to it being submitted to Fathomnet. Um, so, I mean, at this point, we're open to it, but obviously, we don't want garbage coming in to to Fathomnet. So, so be aware of that. Uh, 
Oh, well, there's another question I think that was related to that. How are we doing on time? One more minute. Heidi, and fairly so, she's confused about the cost structure versus open source status for Tater. So is the cost just for cloud services and support or for any use of Tater? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, so Tater is basically what's known as an open SaaS product where the code base itself, uh, you can access, I didn't actually put the link in there, that's a remiss, but the entire code base is hosted on GitHub and it's open source uh, and it's an AGPL v3 license. So if you have the you know, IT staff um, that is, you know, wants to kind of go, go through that, we've had people stand this up in their own lab um, and reach out to us, you know, via GitHub issues and, you know, do stuff there. And it's 100% free there. Um, the cost is 100% related to a managed instance of Tater, what we call Tater Cloud. And that means that you don't have to go install or provision AWS or, or bare metal infrastructure. We handle all of that. Uh, we handle the cost of the storage and all of that stuff. And that's all rolled into what we would, you know, basically license to you as part of a commercial license. So it's primarily around the support, the ability to do, you know, uh, configuration, user onboarding, user training, and, and all of the attendant stuff associated. Hopefully that clears it up a little bit. That was helpful, Ben. Okay. Well, I think, are we timekeeper? Katie, are we out of time? So we're I'll break. let you. Yeah. Well, oh, break. You, you said you wanted it. You mentioned Already did. something before the break. <clears throat> Already did. I, I just, I wanted to stress the point that we aren't trying to pick any winners here for annotation tools, but we want to highlight the fact that regardless of what annotation tool you use, um, you know, Fathomit can take those contributions. So thank Excellent. you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, everyone. We have a 15 minute break right now. Um, so go get your cup of coffee or whatever. Um, right now we'll come back at the top of the hour in whatever time zone you are, unless you're in one of the half time zones, in which case bottom of the hour. So we'll see you back in 15 minutes. <laughs>